Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Today's video is going to be a continuation of the part 5 retopology video where we retopologize the character's body to be low poly. In this video, we are going to be UV unwrapping the body and armor to prepare the objects for texture painting. Okay, so going up to the UV editing tab, I'm going to hide the armor for now, then going to start with the head. Tabbing into edit mode, I'm going to alt left click the center line and then press B for box select, then middle click to deselect the vertices on the face. This will leave the rest selected. Then I'm going to go underneath the chin and select a few vertices on each side of the center line and then going to press control E to pull up the edge menu and select mark seam. Now pressing U on the keyboard to pull up the UV unwrap menu, I'm going to first select live unwrap. Then I'm going to press U again to pull up the same menu and then select unwrap at the top. Okay, so now you should see on the left, the head is now basically flattened out like a piece of paper. Live unwrap is an option that automatically updates your UV maps whenever you place a new seam. Now I'm going to go up to the texture image panel here and click on new. I'm going to name this UV grid, increase the width and height to 2048 by 2048, and then untick alpha, as that relates to transparency, which we don't need right now. Then I'm going to select in the generated type pulldown, the UV grid option, then press OK. Now you should have this checkerboard pattern in the Blender file. This is important for us to understand how textures will appear on the model. To help us visually see this on the model, we're going to go back to the shading editor and then making sure you are in object mode here, select the head. Now in the node editor, press shift A and in the search menu, type image to add an image texture node. Now in the image texture node, click here and then select your newly created UV grid image. Here I have a whole bunch of brush images I imported, so my list looks a lot different than yours probably does. So once you've selected the UV grid image, connect the color up to the principled node. Now we can see the checkerboard pattern on the head. Back over to the UV editing tab, I'm going to press Z on the keyboard to pull up the render mode pie menu, and I'm going to select material preview so we can see the checkered pattern in the viewport. Now way over in the top left corner here, I'm going to tick the UV sync selection box. This makes it so that when you select a vertex in either window, the corresponding vertex highlights in the other. This makes it easier to understand how your flattened UV map corresponds to your 3D model. Okay, so looking at the model, you can see that the squares are a little skewed in parts, like behind the ears. Some squares are much bigger than others, like on the ears and nose, and some seem crooked. So to fix this, we're going to place more seams. You'll notice as you place a seam with live wrap on, the squares will shift around. Your goal here as you place seams is that the squares will become more uniform and align better with each other. Some experimentation is usually required here. Generally, good places are down the middle like we did earlier, around the ears, and from behind the ears towards the shoulder. The end goal should be to get the squares as uniform as you can, as any stretching will show through when you go to paint the texture. Generally, you want to keep the seams to where they won't be seen, since a seam will create an edge where textures will intersect and it can be quite visible. Generally, placing a seam down the length of a cylindrically shaped object will really help clean up the UVs. Here you can see on the ear, as I place a seam around the length of the ear, it drastically changes from being stretched out to matching the rest of the head relatively well. You can also remove seams if you don't like them by pressing Control E and then selecting Clear Seam.
Okay, the head looks okay now. Moving on to the body. Back to the shader editor. I'm going to remove the material that is currently assigned to it. Here I have a few different materials I assigned earlier, so I'm removing all of them. Then I'm going to select the same material that is assigned to the head, which is called skin right now. I'm going to rename it body and eventually assign it to all other parts of the body. Now the body looks gray and not checkered like the head because we haven't unwrapped it yet. Going back over to the UV editor, I'm going to place a seam down the middle and then press U to unwrap and see what we end up with. So as you can see, it looks pretty gnarly. You can see some major stretching on the arms and legs. Time to place more seams. I'm gonna remove the middle seam and start working my way around the body, placing seams around the neck, around the shoulders, and then down the outside of the arms. Generally, you want to place seams where they might end up on clothing naturally. I end up removing these a little bit later since it's better to have the seams in areas that aren't seen. After removing the seams down the outside of the arms, however, you can see the UVs on the chest are crooked and skewed. To fix this, I'm going to do what we did to the face. I'm going to alt left click the center line and then B and middle mouse button to box deselect the front part. As you can see, this cleans up the UVs on the front and avoids a nasty seam in a highly visible area of the model. Now onto the fingers. I'm gonna mark a seam down the length of each finger and then one on the tip underneath the fingernail where it will hopefully not be noticed too much. For the gloves, I'm going to mark seams where you might see a seam on a real glove, down the sides, in between the fingers where the webbing is. between the thumb and index finger, and then from the thumb to the wrist. Now onto the fingernails and hair. The squares are quite small here, meaning any textures here will be very high detail. 
Because these aren't areas that need a particularly high amount of detail, I scale them down a bit to better match the rest of the model. Okay, so onto the armor now. For the armor, I'm going to use an automatic UV unwrapping tool built into Blender called Smart UV Project. Pressing U on the keyboard and then selecting Smart UV Project from the menu. And there you have it, unwrapped in just a second. With all the bevels and geometry in the armor, the UVs are going to be pretty busy and overwhelming, but for our purposes, it should be okay. I've created a shader editor window here so I don't have to jump back and forth. Similar to the body before, I'm selecting the goggle band, changing the name of the material to armor, adding an image texture, and then selecting the UV grid image we created for the body earlier. I want all the pieces of the armor to have the same material, so I'm going to shift select all the other pieces of the armor, add the armor material, and then press Ctrl plus L and select materials from the menu that pops up. This will assign the material to everything selected. Okay, with everything having the same material we are calling armor, I'm going to select each piece and then Smart UV Project. Then I'll scale it accordingly. You can select multiple objects at once and then Smart UV Project, but it can cause objects to have very stretched out UVs, like you may notice with the backpack. To fix this, I just end up selecting the backpack by itself and unwrapping it by itself. For the knife, you can see some of the squares are stretched, so I press L on my keyboard to select all the connected vertices, and then scale in the X and Y respectively to reduce the stretching. Okay, now with everything unwrapped, it's time to pack all of the UVs onto their respective maps neatly and with no overlapping. 
You could use UDIMs here, but I'm going to keep it simple and just have two separate UV maps, one for the body and one for the armor. Starting with the body, I'm going to select all the objects, tab into edit mode, and select all the vertices. Then I'm going to go to the UV menu here and select Pack Islands. This takes the horribly overlapped UVs and packs them nicely onto the map with no overlap. This also utilizes the space of the map in the most optimal way. Now you can see though the squares are all different sizes throughout the model. The body has large, low resolution and the gloves have high resolution. If you wanted a more uniform resolution throughout the model, you can go back to the UV menu and select Average Islands Scale. This will update the UV so that all the objects have the same resolution. But as you can see over on the left, there is some overlap and some parts are actually out of bounds. To fix this, you can select Pack Islands again. Now you can see though that the UV map isn't being efficiently used. There are large blank areas and the resolution on the face is quite low now, where you probably want more detail. If you wanted, you can now manually edit the UVs by selecting areas quickly with L, and then moving, scaling, and rotating as necessary. You can of course just pick Pack Islands and be done with it since it was a relatively decent result. For the armor, I'll stick with the simpler route and just select Pack Islands. Good enough for now, I think. Okay, so there you have it. The UV unwrapping stage is done. Next, we will do some light texture painting. Hit me up on social media and show me what you have, or let me know if I made any mistakes or could have done something way better. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope it helped, and see you in the next one.